Are you a Swifty? Yep, you too. Right. Questions are you? Nice, that's the better shirt. There we go. ACDC. There we go. <clears throat> okay, um, Saturday's game. Uh, two really good defenses going at it. Uh, offensively, neither team got much, uh, much generated, but uh, that's sometimes how games go. I mean, there's uh, all different ways to win a game, and and uh, that was definitely a defensive struggle. Uh, defensive battle is probably a better word. Uh, our defense played outstanding. Uh, seven sacks, uh, two takeaways, nine yards rushing allowed. I mean, there's a lot of good things going on defensively. That game started from the first snap when uh, Kareni Reed uh, had that pick six. So we got off to a great start and just maintained that the in, essentially the entire game. Uh, offensively, like I said, uh, didn't have a whole lot of success against their defense. Uh, our numbers weren't weren't good enough, but we'll continue to uh, obviously work hard and try to try to get things rectified. Uh, special teams was a solid uh, uh, phase for us. Uh, punt game continues to be really an asset for us in flipping the field and, and field position. Um, so overall, it was a good win for us. Uh, they were a good football team. So uh, you know, a win at home against a top 25 ranked opponent. Uh, head to uh, Oregon State this week. Uh, it's, they're, they're a really good football team. I know they had a, a tough loss on Saturday, but, but uh, they're an outstanding team. And uh, we've, uh, last time we were up there, we didn't fare so well, so we gotta try to play better than we did last time. But, but uh, you know, we're gonna have a, week, a good week of preparation, hopefully, because that's what it's all about. And, and uh, our guys have been good all season long uh, with their preparation, and so, we will uh, go through our usual routine, and then uh, six o'clock kickoff. I believe at six p.m. Six p.m. So away we go. Questions, Justin. Anybody? It's a doozy. It's a doozy. Okay. A doozy. Okay. Total offense of two nineteen. Is there a plan to reduce? Salt in the wound. Salt yeah. in the wound. Okay. That's what I said. Hmm. Is there a plan to reduce? integrate one of the other quarterbacks into this week's offense package to increase production? Yeah, we'd like to reintegrate Cam. We'll see if that happens. But uh, like I said, there was uh, it was more to it than uh, in the quarterback position. Nate didn't play poorly. He, you know, his numbers were, were okay. We did turn the ball over once. But but yeah, we got to find a, some ways, plural, to uh, do a better job of moving the football. But we'll see what happens. Kyle, on, on Saturday night, Nate Johnson went to Twitter and kind of took responsibility for it kind of in that regard. Do you, do you feel like that's maybe him trying to be a leader? Do you feel like he's taking that too hard on himself? Or kind of what's your thoughts on what he would do there? Well, I have no idea. I don't ever, ever, ever get on Twitter or any social media for that matter. So I, I don't, I'm completely ignorant and oblivious to what he said. But that's admirable if he's... Uh, Taking accountability, I, I don't know if it's accurate. You know, like I said, there's a, there's a lot that went into, to our lack of production. Uh, and, and you start with UCLA's defense. They're a really athletic, fast uh, defense that that uh, is going to be, you know, give a lot of people fits this year. But uh, Nate is a, a stand-up guy, and and uh, he is learning how to be a leader, and that. To me, I take that as a positive thing from Nate that he that he would uh, point the finger at himself, even though I don't, I'm not buying into that. But but that was uh, that'd be my take on that. You look at Oregon State; you can make a strong case they got the best running game in the conference. As you guard and defend against that, how do you do that while still not being susceptible in the throwing? Yeah, you got to uh, you know you can't uh, become one-dimensional defensively. We talk about our defense trying to make offenses one-dimensional, but we can't just load up the box and try to take away one thing and then make yourself susceptible to, to uh, you know, action pass and, and balls up the field. And so uh, we got to have, uh, you know, just sound schemes that, uh, you know, are not going to be able to be exploited. And, and really it comes down to fundamentals and technique up front, which is what they're all about. They have an outstanding offensive line. They seem to have it every single year, a uh, very productive offensive line. And they run the ball exceptionally well, pre pre predominantly the stretch play. That's their number one go-to play. And uh, they they run it 
to perfection. And so it's difficult to stop, but uh, it's all about fitting uh, the right gaps and being in the right spot at the right time with the right fundamentals and technique, and, and that's what we got to do. Leaky gets called for that targeting. Do you appeal that, or do you kind of let it go? We are appealing it. Uh, I don't know what will come of it. I think appeals are very rarely uh, accepted, upheld, whatever. But uh, yeah, we're sent, we sent that in, and, and at least want an explanation. I mean, you know, just just a little more uh, clarity than what we had uh, during the course of the game would be nice. And, and uh, if they were able to reverse it, that'd be even better. Because right now, as it stands, he's going to miss the first half of uh, of the game this weekend. Short of being able to reintegrate Cam, how do you? What are kind of the biggest issues? Kind of starting the offense going forward. Uh, I think we need to be a little more. Uh, dominant up front. We expect to be. We've got a good offensive line. They haven't been bad this year. A couple of the games we've rushed for over 200 yards, but a couple of the games we haven't been so good. And so uh, trying to find some more consistency up front and physicality. Um, you know, the running back uh, has kind of been a little bit of a musical chairs position for us, as has a lot of positions. But but uh, right now, you know, Jalen was the lead back, carried the ball what, 25 times, I think he did on, on Saturday. And so, uh, you know, we've just got to be better executing our, our – we're a zone team, you know, zone blocking scheme and and uh, being able to execute that better and, and have the running backs, uh, you know, maybe get a little more uh, yards after contact. You know, that would that would help. You know, there's three or four things that really need to play into that. No, and probably number one is have more of a threatening throw game because when teams just – you know, no, you're not going to throw and load up the box. It's tough sledding in there. I thought this would have been the most important question. Did UCLA substitute on that penalty? <laughs> they went, it was the same group, but he, the receiver came, went out of into the bench area and then back out. It was the same guy, but went in the bench and out. So came off the sideline. When you come off the sideline, there's supposed to be a, a stoppage. But anyway, it's that was a debacle of sorts. Yeah. Debacle is the right word for that. Uh, Taylor Johnson played a lot of free safety. I know you kind of talked about it post game. Mm -hmm. What what does that do? And you know, with the other two dynamic safeties that you have in terms of flexibility and versatility. Yeah, it gives us a lot of flexibility. First of all, and and uh, those two safeties are. Uh, yeah, I've been bragging on them all year. They're tremendous players. And what it does, it brings one of them closer to the box and into the action. Uh, there is a little trade-off in man coverage ability because, you know, obviously Teo being more of a corner uh, has a little more, uh, I don't want to say expertise, but, a, but a, it's a better matchup when he's on skill than, than uh, at times with a safety. But, but the bottom line is it gets the safeties closer to the box and it gets Teo. That's probably his... I don't think probably that that is his natural position, and next year, that's where he'll be full time. Is, is back in the back end, and he's he clocked the fastest forty time on our team, and so he's got a great deal of range back there, and and uh, really can uh, play that center field position really well. I know it's not easy to compare, you know, to any type of situation, but when you look at this defense, how are they similar or better or anything to that twenty nineteen defense that you had? Yeah, I'd have, to, I'd have to go back and watch film to recall, you know, who was on that uh, defense. I, I know, uh, was that the year we lost in the championship game and we didn't allow a touchdown? Yeah, okay. Um, very comparable so far. I mean, it's still early. You know, we're only four games in, but but uh, our defense has been very consistent all four games. Uh, got a lot of really good players, got some depth, and uh, they've completely suffocated UCLA on Saturday, and so we'll have to see how uh, how they continue to evolve and develop. But they're off to a really good start, and uh, we'll see where they can take this thing. You spoke Saturday about um, there being a bit of a projection with Jonah Ellis, but figuring that he had the you know the genes to get bigger. Mm -hmm. How have you seen him kind of evolve over the last couple of years to where he is now, and how does that help him having uh, having to throw on the staff? Well, first of all, he's put on about 25 pounds since he got here. He's 245, 250 right in there. When we got him, he was, you know, 215, 220 uh, range. So he's, you know, in the weight room, he's developed himself and, and put on really good good weight and hasn't lost a step. In fact, he's probably faster than he was when he got here. Um, having his dad here, uh, having played for my father, I know that's a great motivator, and I think it is for Jonah as well. And, and uh 
you know, with uh, especially with Luther's expertise being in the defensive line, and that's where Jonah plays. They can, uh, you know, uh, talk football and, and continue to talk about ways to get better, you know, at home. And although I don't know if Jonah lives at home with them, he might have his own place. But anyways, it's I see it as a plus. I see it because I lived it. I went through it, and uh, I think that's uh, just one more uh, resource and one, uh, you know, just a way to uh, continue to uh, refine your game. Kyle, with all these injuries, have you gone back and been able to identify like one or two trends, something that could be adjusted? Have not. We've, we've looked at it from every angle. Um, there's, uh, you know, there's no common denominator or thing, uh, uh, period in practice where, you know, injuries show up more. Uh, I mean, we've looked at every single factor, and there is no... Uh, at least nothing obvious that jumps out to say, hey, this drill is too dangerous or, or whatever. And so uh, we just continue to forge ahead and hope that, uh, you know, it will slow down for us and we'll start to get some guys back. NFL players have made a deal recently about playing on artificial turf. Uh -huh. That hasn't spread to the college game, but you can see how one day it might. Yeah. Would it be an advantage to be on, you can, get, you can practice on either surface, but you play home games on turf. Right. Would it be an advantage to be on grass? I don't know if it's an advantage, you know, you know as far as, or, or does it deter injury? Is that what you're saying? I'd have to read the studies. I think, uh, you know, there's pros and cons from, from things I've heard. Um, but I, preferably, my own personal side, I'd rather play on grass as a player. I would always prefer grass over turf. And, uh, you know, but I, I, you know, scientifically or, or injury data, I'd have to really do a deep dive into that and, and uh, see if there is, in fact, uh, you know, big, big differences in the two surfaces. So. Does DJ Uyunglele change anything with this team based on what you've seen in the last years? Are they still kind of the same type of team? Same type of team. Yeah, they've just, uh, you know, they plug in a new quarterback, and but the same, you know, offensive line play is, is outstanding. Same philosophy, same MO. I mean, it, it doesn't change much at all from year to year. You reference Jalen Glover being kind of thrust in the position of lead back mm -hmm. with JJ's injury. How is he kind of different? What what unique skills does he bring into? Uh, he's uh, he's kind of a tweener back. He's not really a power back, but he's not a uh, like a scat back. I mean, he's he's a guy that can run in between the tackles as well as uh, break it outside on occasion. Um, he's more compact. I mean, he's he's not very tall, five seven, but he's two hundred and five pounds, so he's thick. Uh, he's he's proven to be very durable through the years. Um, He's got to get better at pat, uh, blitz pickup. You know, we we, uh, we need to continue to work on that. He's got some some uh, improvement to do there, but uh, he was very prolific in high school. He rushed for thousands and thousands of yards in high school down in Florida. He was the player of the year in the state of Florida uh, in one of the. I guess they probably have more than one uh, service that names a player of the year, but he was player of the year uh, in one of the major uh, award givers. And so he's, uh, you know, he's he's a really good running back, and he's he's getting his opportunity now, and he'll, you know, we'll see what he can do, assuming that, uh, you know, we don't have anybody return this week. Last week you mentioned that Cam and Nate split reps in practice. Does that split change at all this week? No, does not change. Does not change. We have a lot of new faces in that tight end room. What do you, what do you? How do you assess that group right now going forward into the season? Room for improvement, just like pretty much every position group on the squad. Uh, like to see a little more physicality, uh, maybe show up more in the throw game, become you know more of a factor. Especially Thomas Yasmin, he's such an athlete and has really good hands, big catch radius, uh, really dangerous after the catch. So I think that uh, we'd like to see. Uh, you know, some of those guys step up and particularly uh, utilize Thomas more than we are. In terms of that throw game, is it more a matter of like Nate still getting used to reads? Um, are wideouts and tight ends getting it open often enough? Is there enough separation? I think so. Yeah, it's just a matter of Nate, you know, feeling comfortable and and uh, going through his progression and us doing a good job of of making sure there's not too much on his plate, you know, because he's still a young quarterback, and and uh, we got to be careful. And I mentioned last week, I think it was, he's got about 70, 75 percent of the offense, and that's that's probably where it where it stays for the time being. You know, we're not going to expand that just yet. Along those same lines, is there a way to expand the run game 
I don't want to say being more creative, but just expanding the money in terms of giving different looks, giving different looks. Yeah, there's always a way to do that, and, and uh, you know we will continue to evolve as the season goes on. And and yeah, you don't want to be predictable or have the same same exact core runs week after week after week. You've got to put some some new wrinkles on it. And and in the past, we've done a good job of doing that, and I expect that we will do that again this year. What did you see from Landon King during his time here? He caught his first touchdown. Yeah. Landon King is a talented kid. He could be a, a real factor for us if he gets bigger. He's too thin right now. Uh, he's had a hard time gaining weight. And uh, if he does get himself to 240, 245, where he needs to be, then he's a guy that uh, has a lot of upside. So we're excited about him. But but uh, it's been one setback after another, gaining weight, you know, sickness and this and that. But but he's not uh, bigger physical, big enough or physical enough yet to be a, a big factor for us. How much of the Oregon State program do you see in your own program? A lot, a lot. You look at the way they recruit, uh, rosters, uh, philosophies. Uh, th there's a lot of, of uh, parallels between us and them, which I think is a, a compliment to us. I mean, I got a lot of respect for Jonathan Smith and what he's done up there, and uh, they do it the right way. So that's a good, good program to be like. You talk about your uh, your punting being able to flip the field and then your defense being as good. I'm wondering how does that factor in to when you have like fourth downs as far as do you go for it knowing that you maybe you have a really good defense but at the same time you can flip the field because DJ thought you should have punted on a fourth and four at the field. <laughs> Well, the uh, analytics said fourth and six was the go, so we were two yards underneath. It was it was go all the way to up to fourth and six, and so uh, not that analytics are the end all be all, but but that's scientifically you know what they thought. Um, there's more that goes into it than just those two factors: how good your punter is, how good your defense is, you know, you know how what are the likelihood of your offense converting based on you know who your quarterback is, what is the likelihood of hitting a field goal based on how talented your field goal kicker is. So there's a lot of things that go into that. But uh, I think the, you know, the gist of your question is we got a lot of confidence in our punter and a ton of confidence in our defense. And so we don't hesitate. In fact, Jack put the ball, six of his eight punts were inside the opponent 20 yard line. I think three of those were inside the 10. So, uh, and he's been, he's coming off and he might get it this week. Did he get it this week again? Special teams, he's been back to back uh, Pac 12 special teams player of the week. That shows you how, how, uh, how effective he's been. And so, but that's a great weapon. That's a great weapon to have. And, and really, as I think I said after the game, it's an extension of the defense, the punt team being able to uh, help uh, with field position. After the, after the game on Saturday, Chip Kelly kind of alluded to a feeling of nostalgia in terms of a lot of these teams are playing for the last time with Oregon State kind of being left behind. Uh, just curious to hear what you think about kind of that nostalgia. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, football has changed so much. I mean, it went years and years and years with very little change at all. And now all of a sudden it's it's complete upheaval. And uh, I can tell you right now we'll play UCLA again down the road because it's going to change again. And there's going to be, uh, you know, a massive shift. And I think UCLA and Utah will probably be, end up in uh, – you know, in the same situation, uh, in a good situation, and and so temporarily, yeah, it's going to be a few years before we play again. But but uh, I think with the changes on the horizon, that that uh, it'll be at some point back together again, somehow, some way. See it? Okay, guys. We'll meet again. <laughs>